So let's let's start and action. So you broke your hand on the actual play, or yes, after the play you like fell off balance. Like what did you, what happened? So yeah, for those of you watching, you can see I've got this cast brace thing on my hand. I was playing softball last week, and yeah. I and, and I still I'll, I'll say this too that I think you jinxed me because you did talk to me before I went to the softball game about how I shouldn't get hurt. You think you think that the baseball gods heard me, <laughs> yeah. and that I jinxed you. I don't, I don't really think that. I just got to give you a hard time that you you did specifically tell me. I did tell you not to hurt yourself. Yes. I tried to remind you we are not in our twenties anymore. We are in our forties. So the, so the thing is though, my brain still when I'm playing sports still yeah. thinks I'm twenty two, even though I'm forty two. So you went for it. So and I was, that's that's so where was, the problem so, started. So I, was, I was playing third base. Okay. And a guy's coming to third. The throw comes in, so I'm trying to tag him. And so I'm reaching out to my left, trying to tag him, and as I do, um, I slip, because I'm 42, not 22, <laughs> and put, put my hand down and crunched it somehow, like bent the pinky back and broke the bone in my hand. So. But it wasn't on him. No, no, it was just on the ground. You, so did you even get him out? No. So you missed the tag. Because I slipped. So I, the And tag broke played. your hand yeah. while missing the tag. Well, I tagged him, just it was slow because I slipped first and then tagged him, but he already got to the base. Because we're in our 40s, that's why it was slow. Yeah. Yeah. So I okay. yeah, I got to the base before I tagged him. So. Well, did you win or lose the game? We won. Well, then that's the only thing that counts, right? You, we, you we, won the game. We won that game, and then we played another game. And there's no and there's no crying in baseball, no. or softball, I guess. You can't cry about it. It it did hurt, but I kept playing. Finished both games. That a boy. Won, so. How did you bat? I just would hold the bat really loosely until right the pitch got there, and then I would grab it and swing, and it would it was like a sharp pain through my hand each time. But then I would just. That hurts just listening to it, <laughs> knowing that it was broken. I mean, I, I'm sure you just thought it was bruised at the time. But I just thought I like dislocated my finger, and it's like, oh, it's gonna be sore for a couple of days, and broke it clean through. I yeah. saw the X-ray because you sent it to me. Yeah, it's it's definitely broken. But good news, don't have to have surgery, and all right, basically just need to kind of give some rest. Yeah, about four weeks probably to let it rest up, and so it's. it's so you're not doing a lot of cello playing right now. No. Okay. It'd be tricky to at least anyway. <laughs> It'd be pretty. You can still play like a guitar box, uh, like to guitar box, a cigar box guitar. It's only got like three to five strings or something. I right? could, I could, well, I was thinking about if I could play bass, but I feel like, you know, those that can see this, there's this big thing on the. It's in the way. It's in the way. It'd be hard to it's play awkward, bass. It's awkward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you won the game. Um, now you're gonna have to rest up your hand. Yeah. You seeing what I'm doing here? No, I was thinking the same thing. Because we got to rest, yeah. Yeah, you got to rest because we were gonna we were talking about um, how God is often depicted in the scriptures as a, as the place of rest for us, right? No. Yep. But He's also depicted as a refuge, and there's some overlap in those two ideas of rest and refuge. But there's also some places where those two words or concepts or ideas, they don't really overlap. There's some distinction there. There's some difference, right? Well, there's, there's certainly places where your refuge might be a place where you can find rest. And there's obviously places maybe where you're not in that refuge you can find rest. But And then even in the refuge... Might well, be ref, refuge is, is really more about safety, though, yes. right? I mean, at the end of the day, you could find rest in a refuge. But a refuge is really about safety. You could be under siege, you know. You you might need to counterattack. It refuge might be a strategic retreat, you know, in order to regroup, right? Or, or even think about refuge. Live to fight another day. Refugee, you may, might be fleeing to a place to get away right. from whatever and persecution you're yeah. under. And, yeah. Or in the Old Testament, they had cities of refuge. You're yep. fleeing to that city, not for rest, but for safety. Mm -hmm. And so God is talked about as a refuge, which can have that idea of rest, you know. Um, and that's kind of when you use refuge more like we would use the word retreat. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, strategic in that sense. I'm retreating in order to go back out and fight another day. But, uh, really a refuge is about safety. So God is talking to us and he's saying, I'm your place of safety. But he also says, I'm your place of rest. And it's important to remember that again, just like we just said, you can find rest in a refuge but a refuge is really about safety, and so sometimes you're you're finding a place of refuge in order to survive. Again, I love your example of refugees. Mm -hmm. You're trying to survive, but that's not very restful. It's not very <laughs> restful to be in a brand new country 
where you don't understand the customs, you barely speak the language maybe, or if at all, um, now you're gonna have to raise your kids or grandkids someplace where you don't share the values. Um, everything's new and frankly scary. I remember, you know, I've lived other places, you know, mm -hmm. and I remember something really simple that just really set me off one day when I was living in Brazil. I, I got sick. I got like a, you know, like a little cold or a little flu, but it wasn't like a big stomach flu or something. But I had a fever, so I don't feel good. Yep. They don't have heated buildings because it's a subtropical area of a largely tropical country. So they don't have heated buildings. And it was wintertime there, and it was only in the 50s, which doesn't sound that bad to a Nebraskan, but if you've got a fever and you can't get warm. I'm trying to get warm, you said they're shivering with a blanket yeah. over you, and yeah. So I'm, just to paint the picture, I'm like really miserable at this point, right? And I go to get some vitamin C from the local drugstore, and they give me these little chewables. Mm -hmm. And I, I go to class, because I have school, so I go to class, and I'm sitting in this college classroom with all these Brazilians, and I pop a vitamin C chewable in my mouth to, you know, kind of help my immune system. Before I know it, my mouth is filling up with foam. <laughs> I'm drooling at the mouth like a mad dog with rabies. I'm running down the hall, and I get to the bathroom stall, and I just, like, all of this out of my mouth into the toilet. And then I'm like, what is going on with these chewables? And then I, I read it in Portuguese again, and I'm like, oh, man, it's, it says Evervescente in Portuguese. It's like a, so, an Alka-Seltzer. Like Alka-Seltzer, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> it's a vitamin C Alka-Seltzer. You're supposed to put it in water, and I just put it in my mouth, and I'm like, <laughs> so I, I, I don't get what's going, and this is what I'm saying about living in another country. Like, I don't get what's going on, and, and I had a fever, so I actually kind of teared up. I was like, this, this is terrible. I hate this. You know, I want to go home. So you... You're a refugee. It's very disorienting, mm -hmm. right? And that that's not necessarily restful. Say that wasn't restful for you at all. You might maybe. be safe in another country, but you're not. You're you're you feel harassed. You feel exhausted all the time. It's very hard to live that way. So I think it's important that the scriptures present to us, in the middle of the sinful, broken world, where so much is always going wrong, so often. I love that the Bible both presents God as a refuge, a place of safety, but also as a place of rest, because so, you and, need both. And as we think about those two things, then, you know, my brain goes to a little bit of, if we're living in this, which we are, living in this sinful, broken world, and, and trying to make sense of whatever kind of fear, uncertainty, all the different things that are going on in our lives, what's that look like when we can find rest in Jesus Christ? What's that look like when we can find yeah. refuge, that God provides ref refuge and safety for us? <clears throat> We've got a a psalm selection here that you brought. Yes. I wonder if we could look at the text. Let's do that. You know, because sometimes when I'm with my students or something and, and I'm talking to them about a question like that and you see people start to look up at the ceiling like the, the answer's in the sky, you got to look down. The answer's in the text, right? The answer's in the Word of God. So you brought a selection here from psalms to look at. Well, this is, this is a good, you know, Good Lutheran one, I think, too, but it's Psalm 46, and I'm just going to read, well, probably the first three verses. Mm -hmm. And it's, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, though the mountain be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Yeah, and just those first three verses, again, the idea of refuge, you can find rest in a refuge, maybe, but it doesn't sound like a very restful situation, you know? If the if the mountains, <laughs> if the the mountains are going, you know being thrown into the heart of the sea, yeah. Um, but it does talk about strength. It talks about help and trouble. I wonder I wonder how we can flesh that out. Can, and we love that kind of talk in, in Lutheran circles, right? Because mm -hmm. we have Martin Luther's old hymn, "A mighty fortress is our God." Right. I even think of what God said to Abram early on in their relationship when God called Abram and he said, "Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield." Mm -hmm. You know, again, that idea of refuge, you know, that idea of strength and a stronghold in the middle of everything else going on. I wonder, though, in practical terms, how do we flesh this out? So in your life, then, maybe we just start with just your yeah. personal experience of your walk with Jesus. 
what how do you find your God to be an actual like a stronghold and a place of safety for you? Well, I, I think it's I think it's sometimes those those times when you're really just wondering about what's what why why am I in this spot right now? Why is this thing happening to me right now? Mm-hmm. And, and maybe it's maybe it's it's things simple about dealing with your kids or dealing with your parents or dealing with you know family or dealing with work, um, and you, you just feel overwhelmed and you feel you feel like you don't know what the right thing is next to do and you and you feel mm-hmm. you're just really struggling to see how is God in the midst of all this right now. And and finding finding God is for for me at least finding the the refuge of God then is in part you know it makes me think about the putting on the full armor of God that He's there to protect us and you've got your you know your shield of faith and the belt of truth and the all those different things that that God gives us that it's it's stuff that He comes to us and even in the midst of those times that He draws us to Him mm-hmm. to come to come into Him He draws us He draws us to Him in His Word. You know, you could you could be reading God's word and, and, and that being illustrative of the reminders about how God is always there even when you don't feel it, you don't see it, and he's he's keeping you safe. He knows the hours of your days, he knows exactly what kinds of things you're going through, he knows exactly how he's he's taking those tough circumstances mm-hmm. and using them to work good in your life. Yeah. You know, what you're saying right now is, is causing me to reflect again on this idea of refuge though. When when we talk about how is he because you talk about you could be reading his word. I'm thinking about why would you be going back to his word? You may have, like somebody may have like a daily devotional routine. Like mm-hmm. some people, they do that, right? You yep. do that, I do that. Some people do that. You just have a daily routine. But I'm thinking of even times in my life, knowing that I have a devotional routine where something else was added to my daily routine that wasn't normally part of it. So... I remember a tough time Anna and I were going through, um, and it had to do with somebody else. It, it didn't have to do with us, but it but it made a tough situation for us to have to navigate as a couple. And I remember we started prayer walking every day together. Like we would do a walk in the neighborhood, but we were praying the whole time together. And that's not our normal routine, right? And so when you talk about those moments where I'm thinking about what drives you back to God, because you think about a refuge, you run into the castle keep, pull up the drawbridge, you know, <laughs> like you, you, you shut yourself in there. And, and I was thinking as you were talking about these moments where God becomes your stronghold, in part because the mountains are being hurled into the heart of the sea, Sometimes it's our enemies or it's a crisis moment or it's brokenness that drives us back to God in ways that normally we wouldn't have run back to him so hard. Well, the, the But you run back into a refuge, you know what I mean? Well, and, and, and from that, I, I used to have this on a keychain for a long time and I broke it, but it was James 4, 8, which is draw near to God and, mm-hmm. um, and, and he'll draw, he'll draw, near, draw near to you. To you. And, 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 and having that idea in my mind when I'm in that spot and it's yeah. it's scary, it's uncertain, it's... But does that make sense when I say I think sometimes when it's scary and uncertain, that causes us to run back to God in ways that we didn't before. Yep. When things were good. Oh, or, absolutely. Or we thought they were good, right? And so when I think of a refuge like that and how you run into a refuge or you run to refuge, you're fleeing for your life. And I think sometimes God is our is our stronghold and our refuge in practical ways in the sense that we we don't like it when things are broken. We don't like when we feel under attack, spiritually or otherwise. But those moments actually drive us back to God. It's it's that blunt reminder that just shoves you down. Yeah. In your own weakness. That, right. That you're really so utterly dependent on God for whatever it is to get through that, that, that you can. And when you have to go to God in prayer and say, God, you've got to take this because I can't. I think for me, that's that's when I know and remember, he's our refuge, he's our strength, he's our stronghold, all those kinds of words, because I'm basically like you said, when when you're pushed down and you're reminded of your weakness, like you get you, you got to say to God, you got to take this, I can't handle this. Because there's, I mean, there's so many you other know? ways that we can look to try to find refuge. You can try to find refuge and safety and planning out your day and having control of what you think you can get done that day, or you can try yeah. to find refuge in, you know distractions you know maybe it's watching the husker football game or maybe it's you know other things that that, that you try to do and, and and all those other things you know they really just serve what about what about painkilling behavior oh sure yeah 
you're trying to find refuge, but you're also kind of trying to find rest because you're trying to kill the pain through drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. Pain killing behavior is, is, is a form of trying to find refuge where it cannot be found yep. and finding rest where it cannot be found. Jesus talked about where rest can be found, though. So we talked about refuge. Jesus talked about where rest can be found. Of course, that's in the Sermon on the Mount. I'll just turn over to it. Um, I think it's Matthew 11, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I don't have the Bible memorized, but we'll, we'll start there. Well, I was going to try to quote it, but then I thought we'd probably better read it. Let's see if you're right. Is it 11? It is 11. Look at you. Way to go. All right, so uh, chapter 11, verse 25 and following. Uh, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things uh, from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Oh, it, it's not the Sermon on the Mount because we're, we're all the way in 11. So, uh, yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Verse 27, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then here's the verse, 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this isn't about survival. This is about how you are resilient and persist. Mm -hmm. So, and, and both concepts are important to the Christian walk with Jesus Christ. Both the idea of how are we going to survive, you know, because the world is hard, man. Life is hard. But also, because life is hard, but we have, we're all in in life, right? Like, we're completely invested because we're here. I mean, you know, you're alive today. You woke up today. So you're all in whether you want to be or not. So how do you live your life in an intentional way with real resilience and persist in the midst of everything that comes at us every day Jesus says, come to me and I'll, I'll give you rest. You don't have to seek pain-killing behaviors. You, 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 you can find real rest in me well, uh, because and, I am the rest. Well, and I think about that, you know, so we're looking to Christ, looking to Jesus to find that rest. Mm -hmm. And with the way that he talks about a yoke. And, yeah. and, and the fact that when I think about a yoke, it's, you know, you're putting over a yoke of oxen and, and, and then that drives the plow that drives and so yeah, you're, you're pulling you're 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 in that spot you're finding rest because you're allowing jesus then to pull you along through the tough spot mm -hmm. you're allowing jesus you know to drive your life in a way that doesn't make sense to the world mm -hmm. and as as you're trying to persevere as you said or or, or just make well, through it and he said and learn from me for i'm gentle and lonely in heart right and you will find rest for your Soul. souls you know and I, you know, I'd have to look it back up in the Greek. It's probably the word psyche, like psyche. Mm -hmm. You'll find rest for the piece of you that's really you, whatever that is. And like whatever, like we have different words for that: soul, psyche, your psychology, your what. We use different words kind of interchangeably, and they kind of did in Greek too. So, but this idea of he doesn't mean like your ghost, like your. Mm -hmm. He means whatever that piece is in you that makes you Dan. Whatever that piece is in me that makes me Will, right? That core of who you are as a human being that's so precious to God because he created you, right? You'll find rest for that inner self when you learn from Jesus and pull in his direction rather than the way the world wants you to go. And it's a weird concept on the surface because he's like, you'll find rest in pulling, you know, <laughs> with Jesus, you yeah, know, yeah. but you'll find rest in, in, in wearing that yoke. But when you think about what he's saying about living your life with intentionality, what's more restful to the inner self than knowing that no matter what happened today, no matter what went down, I can lay my head on my pillow in peace knowing that I'm walking with my Savior, Jesus Christ. There's no sweeter sleep than that. No sweeter sleep, and it's just the fact, like you said, that inner psyche, that inner part of God knows exactly who each of us are. He right. made us. We're unique. Yeah. But then also just setting in rest of the fact that you're, the, you're a redeemed child of God. Yeah. That even if I die today, I know mm -hmm. where my soul rests. Right. I, I know where I'm going to be. 
Yeah. And so then, you know, the visual that pops in my head with all this is, is finding rest in the midst of all this craziness of our broken world is you, you might see those videos and it's, it's the, it's the, the flash forward, um, really fast and you see all the, the streaks of the cars as everything's moving really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it just, it, it's, it's the whole thing of the world's moving at hundred miles an hour, just going, going, going. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting in this moment where you don't feel like you're moving. And so, okay, yeah. Okay. So that, that's, that's okay. This is a true story. <laughs> You, this is, but that's triggering kind of this, this story. This is a true story. So if you go to Charleston, South Carolina, there's a big Anglican church there. Mm -hmm. Like, it used to be Church of England, right? But yep. it's the Episcopalians. Uh, so there's this big English church there called St. Philip's. Okay? And as you're traveling down that street where St. Phil sits... You, the, the church front steps stick out into the street and the street has to curve around the front steps. So I was asking a local, that's weird. Like, how did that get to be that way, right? Um, and St. Philip's, by the way, is the mother church for Charleston. Like, that's where signers of the Declaration of Independence are buried. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how old that church is, right? They're in the churchyard to the side of it. And so that's the mother church. There's a big deal, this church. And so I asked a local, well, what's the deal with the church? And he said, well, at the time, the pastor of the church, they came to the pastor of St. Phil's and they said, w the city leaders said, we want to redo this street and make it straight. But in order to do that, we need to ask you, we'll pay you, like we'll pay the church to get the construction done, but we need to, to redesign your front steps because the church was there before that road was there. Mm-hmm. And because otherwise we'll have to do the road around you, and the whole point of this is to make the str the street straight. <laughs> and and so uh, the pastor said, "Well, I don't understand what the problem is." And they're like, "Well, it'll slow traffic down to have to go around the front steps of the church in this curve." And he said, "Sometimes it's the church's job to slow everybody down." I just love that. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you when you talk about everybody's going so fast. And when we're centered in God's word, we're centered with him in prayer, um, it can be just as simple as changing the channel in the car in the midst of everything that's going on. You change it from classic rock over to a Christian station and just listen to a positive Christian song that praises God and puts you back into that mindset. It can be as simple as something like that that, that helps you to slow the role, you know, slow yep. down a minute and 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 rest in your inner self in that connection you have with the Savior of the whole world, Jesus Christ. I mean, think about that. We we can go to the Savior of the whole world anytime we want. And he listens we, to us and he answers us. I mean, that's when that'll blow your mind if you really stop and think about what you have available to you. And um, that's something that that I I do take for granted. I don't want to take it for granted. And when I stop it for a second and remember who I who I can go talk to, who I have access to, it blows my mind. Well, I, and it and it makes you feel like you're slowing down, like you said. Well, I, and I told you this this morning earlier that I was I was praying a little bit this morning, and part of my prayer was admitting that, Lord, I'm sorry I hadn't talked to you for a couple of days as much as I should have. Right. Yeah. And maybe not should have. That's not the right word. But I just yeah. We don't put. Black cloud over <laughs> talking to Jesus again, you know. But but but, the, but my my brain goes to this of you know you talk about the amazing fact that here's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, yeah, who was there before the creation of the world, mm -hmm. redeemed us, and we have access to Him. And and, and yeah. there's so many different ways that you know we talk about coming to Jesus to find rest. Mm -hmm. There's so many different spots that he, he promises to meet us. He promises to meet us when we talk to Him in prayer. He promises to meet us when when we read His Word. He promises to meet us when we come to worship and we receive yeah, absolution of our sins. We're we're at at the we, table. Come, we come to the table for the, you know, yeah. take his body and blood uh, yeah. for the forgiveness of our sins that he's to sustain and strengthen us. And so, mm -hmm. you know, just, just those promises of, of Jesus saying, I'm there for you and I'm going to meet you in these spots yeah. to help you find rest. And help you slow your roll, man. <laughs> slow down for a minute. Yeah, slow down a minute. And it's okay if we're going to slow down a minute. Well, man, I, I think... I think it's so cool when we think about these promises of God that, that he is, not that he provides these things. And that's the, that's the sureness of this promise. God doesn't provide rest or provide refuge. 
He is our stronghold. He is our refuge. He is our rest. And, and we find those things with him. So, um, you know, if you're listening, I, I hope you, you know, got, got a moment to reflect on, on these wonderful promises of God along with us. And uh, we enjoy spending this time with you. We'll, we'll catch you next time.